I think HIV vaccines present some interesting and distinct challenges. And as I was putting this talk together with the, um, our team at NIH, we kept coming back to the question of whether or not we really thought a TPP was useful for HIV vaccines at this point in development. But, um, but it's clearly that um, putting a TPP together is, is not necessarily a straightforward exercise. The target product profile, um, I think, uh, came, um, it, um, came um, to a large extent out of a working group that was convened in the late 90s. It consisted of FDA members as well as industry members, and the, the goal of this group was to try to discuss procedures that could um, help improve the drug development process. One of the recommendations of this group was that um, there should be, the, um, to implement the use of a template that could help standardize uh, a way to summarize the claims and the um, labeling concepts that a developer would eventually want to include in the package label. And the goal was that the use of this template would in turn help focus the drug development process to ensure that the appropriate studies were being done. So what does the target product profile look like? They're organized according to the attributes or the characteristics of the product that are the goals of your drug development program. So that would be the first column, attribute. And then in the far column, you, this is then filled out, and I think this is what we're going to do later, is you fill it out with the studies that are intended to support that target. And we'll go through some examples in a minute. A lot of the target product profiles that people use now have two columns. They have columns for what your desired or optimal target is, and then they have um, a column that would list a minimally acceptable product. So, so the, the, the point of the TPP is to, is, to, is to lay out what you want in the beginning. It's the point of the concept of beginning with the goal in mind, and to identify the studies that you need uh, to, to, to reach the label claims that you're interested in. The TPP, the goal is to get you to focus your development product by laying out specifically what, you're in, what, what, would, what you'd like to accomplish. In your eventual product labeling, you're going to need to, um, you're going to, need to specify your, your regimen, <clears throat> excuse me, how many doses, you're going to need to specify your target population, and you're going to need to specify the efficacy that you need to hit in your label, uh, in your license enabling study in, or, in order to claim efficacy. So you can see that by going through the exercise and laying out specific claims, it forces you to define the requirements. And by defining these requirements, you'll then be designing the right studies <clears throat> as opposed to other studies. Candidate HIV vaccines um, have, have, have some distinct features that I think make it more of a challenge. And um, we... Um, and, and that's what we're working on today. Um, some of the, some of the, we've talked about some of the things, I think, that make an HIV vaccine candidate a little bit challenging. Um, first of all, um, the, the difficulty in having a preclinical model that you can use to help guide your studies. Um, having clinical immunologic endpoints also that are important for helping to um, down-select and pick proper candidates and pick pro proper regimens. And also, um, really importantly, um, what specific molecule should you be developing? It's a complex development problem. There have been a number of studies ongoing, and there's been um, limited clinical success to this point. And then there are a number of different candidates being tested, and these candidates are based on multiple platforms. And um, these um, platforms, and a lot of times these different candidates are put together into different into heterologous regimens, which only increases, the com only increases the complexity of the problem. And this also, um, I've noticed, tends to result in having immunization regimens that are very long and very complicated. So um, how, how should we approach this problem of developing a TPP for an HIV vaccine? Well, first, um, it's probably impossible, and this is probably obvious, that you're not going to have a TPP for an HIV vaccine. There's going to be multiple TPPs for multiple products. A second point um, that I want to emphasize and hopefully um, will trigger some discussion is that a number of the candidate vaccines that we have are at an early stage of development, and it's important to consider what TPP attributes are important. Uh, I know when you're developing a target product profile, it's really tempting to start thinking about final configurations and efficacy studies, but for a lot of the products, at least that NIH is working on, we're in an earlier stage of development, and some of the more practical questions are things like, you know, which are the, if you have to limit yourself, which are the, which are the actual endpoints you should be looking at, 
and what's the, acceptable, what's the appropriate amount of development you need, how much stability data do you need, how many grams of protein do you need to produce. So some of those things are, are the more pressing questions, and sometimes focusing on later stage questions um, is, is, is not, isn't as helpful. One of the goals of this is hopefully to encourage people to, con to either continue to use TPPs or to begin to to begin to involve them in their, in their development process because it really does help you increase kind of the rigor of your thinking and force you to put down on paper th the, the, the exact questions that you're trying to answer. Another aspect of HIV vaccines that is somewhat unique is that some of the candidates that we're working on aren't necessarily intended to go all the way to licensure. These are molecules or candidates that are being developed to answer specific immunological questions in humans um, given the absence of a preclinical model. And these products are likely to be used in um, phase one studies or early clinical studies, um, possibly a couple of studies if you're doing mix and match regimens with other candidates. But, but, but we're not necessarily thinking that these products are going to go all the way through to licensure. And the attributes in the target product profile really were developed to try to guide molecules toward um, Licensure, so I think we need to, again, stop and think about what, actu what, what specific characteristics of products do we want to capture in a TPP when it's more of a clinical research reagent. And some of the things that may not be as important are um, things such as doses and schedule. I think it's a good exercise to try to include using a target product profile concept in your development program. It helps you to prioritize what, what aspects of the vaccine are important, and then it helps you um, to I, I try to um, meet those goals with a little more rigor than, than if you were just developing a product with, with, with less uh, focused goals. Generally, you need a TPP to calculate an NPV. And the reason why is there's no way for marketing to figure out what the revenues are going to be unless they know what the product is going to be like. The entire focus of the development plan is around the TPP. And in some companies, including the one I'm in now, you can't really get the process development people to be mobilized to start process development and make your products for you unless you have a product development plan which says what you're going to do. And an essential, and some companies call it an NME declaration where you have a new molecular entity that you're declaring. That NME is, is tied in some ways to a product development plan, and the product development plan is tied to the TPP. So for us, the TPP means we're serious. It's a living document. It can change, but you have to do it. The important thing about the TPP is that it gives you common language. It's like a Rosetta Stone so that you can talk to your product development people. You can talk to the federal agencies that are important, not only the funders but the FDA, because often I think you're talking across each other in your goals, and this forces you to the table to talk about the same things in a common language. And it also, when you're developing something on the research side, it gives you a language to talk to potential partners in the pharmaceutical side so that you can also meet on a common document and talk about the same things. Yeah. So it sh people should not be intimidated by looking at this and thinking that it's too soon to put your thoughts down because it will be something that changes and evolves with time as you get more data and you'll discard some things and you'll add some other things. But it is really meant to be a starting foundation for those discussions. I, I agree completely with everybody on that the TPP is uh, a, a document that facilitates the communication between different functions and different stakeholders. That happens across partners, for instance, um, but it also, of course, happens inside each one of the organizations. At Sanofi Pasteur, we use TPPs for everything that we have, and we tend to develop uh, early versions of the TPP from preclinical development. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty interesting exercise because you bring together on the same table people that have just the bench preclinical research perspective. Then you have the clinicians uh, and medical uh, representatives that uh, have that perspective on how to advance the projects through different stages of development. And, and then you have also, in the same table, you have the marketing folks and uh, 
you know, commercial operations folks for, for industry. And you, you have to come up with a, a single uh, document that will satisfy what the researchers are doing at the bench preclinically, what the clinicians think can be put forth in a path towards your ultimate goal. And uh, that ultimate goal has to satisfy the commercial function. You need, you need the, the stakeholders to come together and argue out what's achievable um, with this vaccine. A and and what's, what evidence do you need and what evidence can you uh, obtain? Like it's all very well for, you know, for someone to say, we want a product that's stable at 43 degrees, as someone suggested, uh, you know, for two months. But we know that that's highly uh, unlikely to be achieved. So you need to sort of, you know, the iterative process needs to happen, both in terms of what you want and what's, what you can generate. When you write it down in a TPP, these, that's the day where, where, as you said, you need to bring uh, aspiration and, and practicality together into a, into a place where they can both where they can both sit, and it, it, it's, um, frankly, it, it, it's one of the seminal um, documents or exercises uh, that is required. Mm -hmm.